So there are four groups of aggregate functions that deal with estimation. Generally speaking, estimation allows us to perform a calculation quicker, but with less accuracy. The cardinality estimation group enables us to estimate the number of distinct values in a set of values. Similarity estimation enables us to estimate the similarity of two or more sets of values. Frequency estimation enables us to estimate with what frequency a certain value appears in a set. And percentile estimation enables us to estimate the percentile of a set of values. Let's kick things off by looking at the cardinality estimation group. So why use an estimation function if we already have the distinct keyword, which when used in conjunction with count, will give us an accurate and exact output of the number of distinct values in a column. Executing a count distinct operation requires an amount of memory proportional to the cardinality, which could be quite costly for very large tables. So Snowflake have implemented something called the hyper log log cardinality estimation algorithm. This returns an approximation of the distinct number of values of a column. The main benefit being that it consumes significantly less memory and is therefore suitable for when input is quite large and an approximate result is acceptable. When compared with count distinct, the average relative error of Snowflake's hyper log log implementation is approximately 1.6. This means that if count distinct returned 1 million, hyper log log would typically return a result in the following range, which is plus or minus 1.6% of 1 million. There are six functions available to us. The main one we'll take a look at is called HLL, short for hyper log log. The others allow you to perform more advanced use cases like incremental cardinality estimation, an advanced topic that's out of scope for this lecture. In this code example, we're seeing the more human friendly alias for the HLL function called approx count distinct. We're basing our calculation on the order key from the line item table from the Snowflake sample data, which is approximately 160 gigabytes in size. I executed this command and got the following value completing in 44 seconds. If we now compare this to a count distinct on the same column, we see the accurate number of distinct values is exactly one and a half billion rows. As you can see though, it took significantly longer to compute. So if this margin of error is acceptable, this function is great for getting a rough idea of how many distinct values are in a column. Okay, let's take a look at estimating similarity. We might come across a need to compare two sets of rows and give some indication of how similar they are. The Jacquard similarity coefficient is a method used to find the similarity and difference between two sets of values. To compute its result, we find the ratio of the intersection and the union for two sets of elements. We don't need to worry about the mathematics too much, but what we should bear in mind is this can be quite a computationally expensive operation. For that reason, Snowflake have implemented a two-step process to estimate similarity without the need to compute the intersection or union of two sets. The first step is to run the min hash function on two sets of input rows. The output of this function is something called the min hash state. This is an array of hash values derived from the set of input rows and forms the basis for the comparison between the two datasets. Min hash has two input parameters, k and an expression. K determines how many hash values you like to be calculated on the input rows. The higher this number, the more accurate an estimation can be. But bear in mind, increasing this number also increases the computation time. The max value you can set is 1024. The expression is where you define which input rows you'd like to pass to the function. Here we're passing in a column of values. Once we have the two min hash states representing the sets of rows we'd like to compute the similarity of, we pass those to a function called approximate similarity. In this code example, we union together two min hash states and pass that column to the approximate similarity function. You can see here we get a floating point number returned with a possible value of zero to one. One indicates that the sets are identical and zero meaning the sets have no overlap. Here we're looking at a customer key ID from related tables, hence why we have such a high similarity. The next family of functions we'll take a look at come under the banner of frequency estimation. The principle among them is called approx top k. This function implements something called the space saving algorithm, used to produce an approximation of values and their frequencies. Let's look at an example to make this clearer. This function has three input parameters. 
the column you'd like to calculate the frequency of values for, the number of values you'd like to be approximated, and the maximum number of distinct values that can be tracked at a time during the estimation process. Increasing this max number makes the estimation more accurate, and in theory uses more memory, although setting it to the max still has good performance in my experience. If we take a look at the output, we're seeing the three values of column P size with the most values. If you wanted to achieve an exact result instead of an estimation, you could run the following group by query. However, as you can see, in this case, the approximation was accurate. And the last group of functions to look at are those used to estimate the percentile of values. To do this, Snowflake have implemented the t-digest algorithm for the functions you see here. Again, accumulate, combine, and estimate are either helper commands or produce intermediate steps of the algorithm. So we'll stick with the main function which does it all, a prox percentile. So taking a step back, what is a percentile? It's a statistical method to express what percentage of a set of values is below a certain value. This can be a bit difficult to conceptualize if you're not familiar with statistics. So let's take a look at an example. We'll insert test scores out of 100 for 10 students. We can then run the approx percentile function, providing as input the score column and a percentile value between 0 and 1. You can think of 0 0.1 being the 10th percentile, 0 0.2 being the 20th percentile, and so on. If we wanted to know the 80th percentile, meaning in other words, what score you'd have to achieve to get as good or better than 80% of other students, we'd plug in 0 0.8. For this group of 10 students, you'd have to achieve at least 74 to be at the 80th percentile. If you're looking to pass the SnowPro course certification, or just want to learn more about Snowflake, check out my introductory Udemy course. We cover the basics like the multi-cluster shared data architecture, and more complex topics like accessing semi-structured data and estimation functions. And for a discount, click the link in the description. Thanks for watching.